No Fun, the Jen Kirkman podcast, episode six. I'm your host, Jen Kirkman, if you couldn't tell. And if you're new, welcome to my podcast where I talk about what's going on in my life, in the world, and in my head every week. This week's episode is called Strangers. And for some of it, at least, I'll be talking about strangers talking to each other, me talking to strangers, but I'll be talking about a lot of other things on this episode, like the bizarre behavior of everyone in my podiatrist's office. I don't know, does everyone have long COVID? Is everyone's brain just broken? When my friends have discovered that I do enjoy talking to strangers, which I know goes against everything you think you know about me in the No Fun podcast, which is my I hate small talk policy, but I'll explain the difference. I'll be talking about Elizabeth Holmes bought a one-way ticket to Mexico after her conviction. I don't really know much about that woman, but we're going we're to find out together. Oh, and just so many other things. I'm, I don't want to promise too much up front. We'll see, we'll see what I get to here on No Fun, the Jen Kirkman podcast. So in sort of rolling over last week's theme of scammers, I saw someone talk to another person on the subway. Oh my God, that must have been so scary. It was definitely in the theme of this week's episode, Two Strangers Talking, but I ultimately think this guy was some kind of, if not scammer, let's just say dreamer. Does that make sense? I have this thing I always say about when someone wants to involve you in their latest thing, and it, they don't have to be a scammer or running a cult. It could be a friend of yours, but or just someone you know sort of distantly, right? An acquaintance. And, and maybe you run into them and they think, oh my God, I've been thinking about you. You know, I want to start a podcast about blah, 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 and I want you to be my first guest. And you're thinking, oh, uh, uh, sure. <laughs> And then you say, yes, oh, wait, wait, it's going to take an hour. I'll be their first guest. And then it just becomes this thing where now they're emailing you. And, you know, what would be really cool is if you could do this kind of prep work for it. Or maybe you could even kind of guest host it for three weeks or go with them to the pitch meeting because they want to turn it into a this and that. I mean, it just starts spiraling. You're like, why did I ever say yes? Don't involve me in your dreams and schemes. Dreaming and scheming. I got my own dreams and schemes. I don't want to be part of yours. That's what I always say about certain people. Oh, that guy, his energy is dreaming and scheming. I can't deal with it. I am so uncomfortable around him because you can't go more than three sentences of back and forth conversation before he's trying to tell you about his newest thing and, you know, can you get involved? And it's... Ugh. So anywhere from a hardcore scammer to a dreamer and schemer. Again, we can all be a dreamer and schemer. We all have our own dreams and schemes. But again, like I said, let, I got enough of my own. But I see this guy on the subway, and I, again, I had to leave before I got my answer of what the hell this is. But I remain fascinated and thinking about these people every day. So I'm on the subway. I forget which train, and I think it's headed towards Brooklyn. And it's a pretty empty car. You know, maybe it's 20% full. And in my little end of the car there's only about four people so there's a guy across from me to my left a woman across from me to my right and a guy next to me a few seats down on my right now this guy is the guy I'll be focusing on the guy three seats down on my right let's call him dollar store Lenny Kravitz do you know what I mean now I don't know how old he is he could be 30 I think he's about 30 but he doesn't have like a fresh-faced youthful look but his energy is young. Well, he's probably like 30. So he's got his dreadlocks. He's, he's a black guy, by the way. I, I want to be very clear because when you say white guy with dreadlocks, it just adds so many other things that we don't need to add to this. So black guy with dreadlocks. So there's no kind of like annoying white guy thing going, you know, you know what I mean? And he's got, um, I don't know, I guess a cool outfit on. It's fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's more fashion forward than fashion neutral. But again, like dollar store Lenny Kravitz. You know, he's not a rock star, but he's not not on that spectrum of that kind of look. 
and there's a woman across from him. And again, I don't know. She could be 28. She could be 38. She's kind of plain. She's got like a cherubic face. Cute, but but plain. Short hair. Little post earrings. I don't know how else to put it, but not big hoops, not conservative pearls, just two earrings. They're, they're some kind of bright color. But she's very, I mean, the reason I'm going into how nondescript she was is because of what this guy ends up saying to her. So forgive me for going on and on, but truly a nondescript outfit. It, it, it's like sweatshirt and jeans with sneakers. They're neither running sneakers nor fashion sneakers, just sneakers. She's not a nurse, though. It's not giving me nurse vibe. It's not giving me college student vibe. She's going to backpack. It's neither I'm going camping backpack, but it's not fashion Prada leather backpack. But it's not quite collegiate either. It's just a, but somewhere in between collegiate and just plain backpack. I mean, this is what I'm saying. I don't even have words to describe how nondescript this woman was. Just everything about her was practical. She didn't look like she had a creative or funky streak. I'll put it that way. Not that she couldn't deep down inside. But again, looking at her, I got no read of who she is. I don't know if she has a TikTok, an Instagram, a Twitter, or if she has no social media. I don't know if she watches, you know, noir indie films or if she watches uh, How I Met Your Mother. I, I don't know what she watches. I don't know what movies, I don't know what music she likes. And so this guy, so she's got her earbuds in and so this guy starts talking to her because when a woman wears headphones in front of a man, the headphones become invisible. Men cannot see headphones on women. It's a thing. It's like being colorblind. They, they can only see headphones on other men. But if a woman has headphones on, a man can't register it. A straight, a straight man. So he starts talking to her. I mean, this is what always fascinates me. It's like, dude, if someone has headphones in, they probably can't hear you. But I suppose just starting talking to someone is more polite than the thing that's happened to me where people motion for you to take your headphones out. That's, that's the thing. When a guy does register that you're wearing headphones, he often will instruct you to take them out before telling you what he wants with you. Just, just you know, per my command, take these out. I can already see the guys getting upset listening. You know the type. They can't even listen to a story about other guys and think to themselves, thank God I'm not like that. Let's hear more about Jen's experience. Not all men. Not all men, but it's always a man, isn't it? Anyway, so he starts talking to her. But she hears him. And what he says to her is, excuse me, are you a poet? And I was immediately perked up. Now, I turn my podcast down that I'm listening to because I want to hear everything that's about to go down. Because You heard me go on and on about how nondescript this woman's outfit was or just her vibe. I don't know where he got poet from. You know, I would have said to myself, maybe that person's a poet if they had one of those macrame purses and feather earrings and a scarf. You know, stereotypical poet of maybe the 1970s, sure. I know a poet can look any which way. You probably walk by poets all day long. You don't know they're poets. They walk among us <laughs> in disguise. But you know what I mean. It was nothing that, uh, that looked artsy fartsy. And my brain went through a million scenarios of why is this man talking to her? Because again, you could say, well, Jen, is it weird for people to talk to each other? In general, no. But on the New York City subway, everyone's in their own world. You, you create uh, this bubble around you that, again, it's your, it's, it's your own little bubble. It's your own little world. It's how you stay sane. It's how you reserve your energy. You just... Keep that bubble up. It's not a standoffish thing. It's a, you're in your own head. You're, you're reading your book. You're listening to a thing. Even if you're just sitting there quietly, you're in your own world. It's not social time. You're decompressing from where you just were. You're gearing up to where you're going. It's everybody's little private time. So it's very odd for people to start talking to each other unless 
it's one of those things where this used to happen a lot more uh, pre-COVID is, you know, it's 12.30, 1 a.m., people have had some drinks, people are piling on the car, you know, you're young, you know, young people talk to each other or just whatever. There's just a general vibe going on. But even then, I'm making it sound too much like, and then everyone acts like they're in a bar. Not, not that either. So anyway, are you a poet, he asks. Now, again, my mind is, is working overtime to figure out why he's saying that. And part of me thinks, oh, maybe he means, uh, are you that poet? Maybe he recognizes her. Maybe he went to a poetry reading at a bookstore recently, saw someone read, thinks this woman looks like her, wants to pay her a compliment. Where can I buy your book? That was so great. And he's really saying, hey, are you that poet? But he's not. He's saying, are you a poet by any chance? I know that he's doing some kind of line, right? He's either trying to pick her up or he's, I don't know, running a poetry cult or something. I, I just, something was off. And it's not because Jen's so cynical. Someone talks to someone else and they obviously are trying to start a cult. I'm telling you, it was a vibe. In New York City, if someone talks to you, they're not always trying to start a cult. In Los Angeles, when a stranger talks to you, they're always trying to get you to join their cult. They may not even know they're in one. They just think they go to this group every week that told them they have to bring more people in and it hasn't dawned on them yet. Or they want you to do some multi-level marketing thing or uh, something. But in New York, it's like, okay, I'll give you a... I'll give you a minute. Let's just see what this is. But I'm going to be very reserved. So... She seems almost flattered and she says, no, no. But she gives this vibe of no comma, but I see where you thought that because, you know, I actually do. Have, like there was that kind of, well, but. And she's taking out her, her earbuds now and putting them in her earbud holder. And I'm wondering, were you doing, were you going to do that anyway? Are you getting ready to get off the subway or are you wanting to engage in conversation with this guy? And then I felt sad because I thought, if this guy is hitting on you, I don't want you to end up with him because I don't trust this man. Does that make sense? Let's just say you're Earth's most normal person. You're an amazing person. You've got a good attachment style. You're not a rapist. You're not a creep. And you truly are just feeling a vibe with a woman on the subway and you want to ask her out and you've never done anything like that before and you'll never do anything since because you end up marrying that woman. I'm telling you right now, if I were the woman, I would be constantly thinking, I can't believe I met this guy on the subway Something's weird about him. Will he end up taking my life savings someday? Or I don't know. I feel like if you think the love of your life is sitting in front of you on the subway, why would you burden the love of your life with giving her such a confusing situation as to should she trust this guy talking to her on the subway? Statistics show she shouldn't, right? Just like if you love something, set it free. If it's yours, it'll come back to you, right? So if you see the love of your life on a subway, this is men, straight men to straight women, don't bother them. Just know that's the love of your life and, and you're going to respect her by not freaking her out and just get off the subway and, and you'll run into her to party if it's meant to be. But I'm telling, I, I, it's too much for me. So she starts talking and, and, and she says, uh, well, I do, um, I, I, I do some music, so I write lyrics, which she said, you know, it's, I guess you could call it poetry, although it's not poetic at all. And I really don't know anything about poetry. But <laughs> And she starts laughing and she's coming to life. But this guy not coming to life. He's not, there's no look on his face that says, holy shit, I threw out a line and I caught a fish. We're vibing, we're talking, you know. He stays kind of the same energy, which freaks me out. So then he reaches across the aisle and shakes her hand and he says, hi, I'm, and I don't remember, remember anyone's name after that because I had an out of body experience from the trauma of just watching two people shake hands who have been sitting on a dirty subway and who knows where anyone's hands have been. It's too much for me. So they shake hands and he sits back down and then it's quiet that neither of them speak for another 30 seconds. And then it's my stop. And as the train is slowing down, I'm starting to stand up and he leans forward and rests his elbow on his knees and clasps his hands together and is sitting in that used car salesman, here's the pitch way. And he says to her, I, I asked you because uh, I'm looking to expand my network. 
And she said, your network? And he said, well, like um, my circle of people. You know, it's, it's like a collective that I, that I have. And she said, oh. And she didn't look disinterested. She didn't look like, oh, warning. Someone's, someone has a collective. Someone has a... And I just wanted to know. And I, I had to get off the train. That's the last thing I heard. But I just... You know, it's either this guy is a total scammer or he's took some kind of self-empowerment course and the misguided teacher gave terrible advice. Like, look, just go up to someone and talk to them. I mean, you know, Paul McCartney just knocked on John Lennon's door one day, you know, just gives like semi-details about something that was actually way more normal and intricate and they had known each other and there was, you know what I mean? But we wouldn't have the Beatles if, if, if they didn't do that. And it's like, okay, well, if strangers, if a stranger didn't talk to someone else, we wouldn't have Charles Manson's cult either, right? So you don't give me the, oh, this person one time. We're not going to have the Beatles part two. Whatever that guy was doing with the woman who's not a poet, it's not going to end up being at the level of the Beatles. So I think it might have been as innocent as he's new to New York. He thinks you just talk to people and you start putting something together and had no self-awareness that, dude, this is a woman, you're a man, that's already probably scary for her. Secondly, whatever you're saying sounds like gobbledygook to someone else. And, but, and I don't know if she was doing that polite thing that, that women do so that we don't get chastised or killed. Oh, great. But I'm telling you, there was something about her entire vibe that made me think she was interested in talking to this guy. But look, look, he's a dollar store Lenny Kravitz, you know, makes the ladies go crazy. But I don't know. I am so curious to know how it ended up. I want to know what his team is, his group, his collective, his whatever word I said at the beginning that I already forget. Expand his circle. I don't know if you two are out there. If this sounds familiar to you, contact me and let me know what ended up happening. But all I know is I keep to myself. If anyone asks me if I'm a poet, I'll just say, scusi, um, no English. Just say, no, no, what? Just, I don't speak English. I don't speak. I've never spoken. My, I got my mouth glued shut 10 years ago. Whatever it takes. I don't need your schemes. I don't need your dreams. All right. I'll keep talking on the other end of this. If you want to join the Patreon, I'll see you over there and you can hear the rest of the episode. And if not, until next week, have fun.